Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my daily chat. Episode number 975, in case you keep tracking. And the topic today is actually about the actually this extension we talked about yesterday. Let me make sure I'm plugged in properly. Yes, I am. Okay. Yesterday I was talking about how we love and how we don't love effectively. Today I'm talking about how loving is different for everybody, and I'll explain that in a moment, which is why dating is so interesting. Interesting from a um I want to say this <laughs> psychological point of view that's probably better with putting it so let me explain what I mean because you may be suffering from this not suffering experiencing this the way we love is unique for every one of us it's kind of like everyone describing the color blue it's gonna be different for every person if you haven't figured that out try that one time yesterday I was talking about how besides the well-known five love languages by Gary Chapman which I did list yesterday and explain how they work I talked about how also we learn as to love by the way we're raised. And so I'm going to recap that one slightly in a different way because I'm aware that for some people this doesn't necessarily land yet. And I'll make sure you get this point because if you do understand this, it could be a game changer in your dating life. Interested? Stay tuned. So, um, and also I'm going to put, I will put some links at the back end of the broadcast so you can check in the comments after I sign off. And I'll also show you where you can, I'll also tell you where you can find the replays to watch my shows, talks, videos. Show sounds a bit pretentious. Um, after at the end of the broadcast too. So let you know what's coming. But let's get into the topic at hand. We as human beings are interesting critters. <laughs> to, be, to be polite. We each have our own particular paradigm of life. Because every one of us, all seven plus billion people, have different life experiences. Even twins have different life experiences because they're perspective. So it's not just the fact you live in the same house, go to the same school, do the same things. It's like the fact you look through different lens, your different eyes and see the world through a different perspective and have different processing of what goes through your eyes, you know, all that stuff, means that we're all unique. So even if you are a twin, the perspective you have is different by the degree of separation you have. So our perception and our, and our, and our attitude is unique as well. Now that may sound simplistic, but when you start understanding how powerful that is, you start to realize that when you say that you're in love with somebody and they may or may not say they love you back, it may not mean the same thing because your understanding, perception and, and uh, attitude about love is unique to you, as is the person you're dating's attitude, understanding, perspective on love for them. Now, this sounds simplistic, I know, but when you start to understand how this shifts, it, it will game changer for you. Because the thing is, what we tend not to do when we're dating is ask deep questions. To be vulnerable enough or exposed enough or risking enough to ask questions about how the how your partner, your date, was raised, what their parents' expression of love was that they remember, is not something you usually share on the first date. But if you did, mm -hmm, if you did share that, not necessarily the first date, but in the first few dates, if you start to realize this person is somebody you like, you want to be with, and you start to ask them about their upbringing, because you want to know what their wiring is about love. Because I talked about this yesterday, we all look at love through different lenses, and we all understand love based upon how we were raised. So, hi Lauren. Yes, it is. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. It's a good point. It is an individual perception. And this is the thing, is that we don't always remember this. Um, like many people, I'm on the dating apps. Yes, I do the dating apps, because I'm single. And so when I'm looking through the dating apps, I watch these people and I see these profiles. And to be, I mean, this is, this is kind of a scary thing, at least scary for me, is I can almost sense who that person's, excuse me, excuse me what that person's dating style is just by looking at the pictures and look at what they write. It's actually, it's not mind blowing, it's heart rendering, heart rending, excuse me, because I start to realize how many people have challenges in the dating arena. They put on a brave face and it is often, often sometimes a brave face they put on. It's not relaxed, it's not comfortable. And I know some people have challenges with being in pictures, but the thing about it is their profile is intended, one would think, to attract to them the perfect partner. Isn't that why you go on dating apps? To find that one person you want to be with the rest of your life? Now, if you go on dating apps just to have fun and meet different people, then this may not be relevant to you, although it could be useful. But if you're looking to find that particular one person where you are absolutely clear this is the right one to be with, dating apps are woefully insufficient. Now, looking at pictures helps too, because one of the challenges with dating apps, some of the dating apps out there don't do that, they don't let you see pictures, but one of the challenges, because we portray so much through our images through our eyes, our facial expression, our body posture, through a picture that 
books can be written, stories can be written, people understand so much about each other if they're willing to look. But for most of us who don't look, we just look at a picture and go, oh, cute or not cute, or handsome or not handsome, or nice car. Because <laughs> some people do pose with things to make themselves look better. That's a different topic, not going to cover that here. But I want to speak to this one piece to make sure you get this point. That the way you express love and the way that your future mate expresses love are quite likely not the same. And if you don't understand that now, you may find yourself um, having challenges when you get into a relationship. Again, yesterday, I would recommend watching yesterday's broadcast. There was much more detail about one of the five love languages I talked about. Excuse me, by the front of the camera. Five love languages I talked about. And also, the, the way that we love, the, the how we love understanding. Because when you understand how you love, first of all, you can see if it's actually um, functionally effective or not. And if it's not, get some help. And I talked about that yesterday too. But if it is functionally effective and it is aligned to yourself, does it match what your partner is expressing? Because just like the five, five love languages, if you don't have the same love um, mechanisms they do, it may not fit together. And I don't mean physically. <laughs> I mean emotionally. And mentally too. So love is a many splendid thing, so to speak. It's a, it's a song title, I'm sure. But also, it's a understanding that when you love somebody, it means transcending some of those paradigms. And some of those, tra those paradigms you're transcending are your own beliefs about love. But be careful that you don't sell out your truth for that purpose. Sometimes we're caught up in the paradigm that we have to sacrifice so much for our partner because it's what love dictates for us to do. No, it doesn't. Let me be clear, very clear about that. Giving up who you are for a partner is not healthy and is not loving. It's usually some sort of dysfunctional psychological relationship you're in. But adding to who you are, and I talk about this many times about relationships are additive, not subtractive. When you're in a relationship with somebody you want to be with, they should add to your life that you already have, not replace anything and not make you feel like you're lacking something. That isn't a healthy form of love, by the way. So understanding that paradigm that maybe you might be choosing partners who take from you energetically or want to occupy your life in a way that's not working will shift your paradigm so you don't do that again. Now, the challenge is maybe your wiring about love, as I mentioned earlier, the way you love, the um, perception of love you carry might actually be that way because of the way you were raised. I'm not going to cover the whole thing now because, again, watch yesterday's this broadcast. But I mentioned very clearly that for many of us, I do, I talked about my own one, we carry these wounds, why don't I say wounds, these beliefs about love that are so not accurate and not healthy because of the way we were raised. We take on and we I should say we inherit, not necessarily consciously, but we, can, we inherit a belief about relationships and about love that isn't ours in the first place. So how, how can you choose a healthy relationship if you're not clear about what you want? This is pivotal, and actually it's a requirement, I would suggest, to look at when you're single before you go on another date. Before you go on another relationship, before you go on another date, leaving up to chance, because for most people watching this, you've been through more than one relationship in your life. I've been through quite a few. And seen that maybe you're not getting what you want. But you may be under the belief that, well, maybe the next one will be better. Maybe the next one will be perfect. Maybe the next one will be the right one. Possibly. But with that many dates out there, the odds of finding the right one without changing something inside are slim to none. This is why I get so passionate about this and why I've done 975 broadcasts talking about love and relationships. It's fundamental that we understand who we are ourselves as loving beings and how we express love and how we don't love, express love in a healthy way so we can change the wiring inside to align ourselves to our true values to get what we really want. Because the challenge is, we're looking for what we really want, but we're bringing something that doesn't fit that in our own beingness. Changing inside what doesn't match what we really want will help you get to where you want to be. That's why I'm passionate about my work and why I coach my clients this way. It absolutely will change your life when you understand how this works. Because the life journey you're on is the only relationship in town. The one with yourself. We are, individually, the longest relationship we ever have with that, within it, with ourselves. Obviously, I know. But for many of us, we think about, well, I'll find somebody else to make myself feel better. Mm -mm. That's the dependency route, which I'm absolutely passionate about stamping out. Codependency sucks. So my invitation to you, my encouragement to you, is to look at how you're loving now, what sort of relationships you're attracting, what you're actually finding in your relationships that's not working, and not try to just replace it with something that's better, but look at what it is that's not working, and then get the help to change it so you can get what you want. Uh, so I will leave some links in the comments for you to get some 
help, some clarity, some guidance, because if you don't, you'll be getting the same thing again and again. And as I said before in other talks, to quote or, or to quote what is attributed to, um, well, I'm going to throw two quotes at you. One of them is attributed to, to Albert Einstein. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again, expecting different results. If you keep doing the same thing without changing, you're going to get the same result. And if, you, if that result isn't working for you, it won't change by doing the same thing again and again. Clear? The second piece, second quote I'll throw at you from George Santayana, which is a quote I've used before in my books too, is those who, don't, those who fail to learn from their history are doomed to repeat it. If you don't learn from your mistakes, you'll keep making them. In love, in war, in life, everywhere. So get some guidance, get some clarity, shift some things so you can learn how to love differently than the way you're doing it, and you'll change your paradigm for the future. Simple enough? Um, I think it's going to be about it. I want to, I, this is really a, a, a sort of a, a PS from yesterday. I did a talk yesterday in much more detail. I recommend you watch that broadcast. That was episode 764. It was yesterday's broadcast. I had a pink striped shirt on. I remember that. So watch that in broadcast if you didn't watch it. I highly recommend it. Again, there'll be links in the comments for you to check out because I do invite you to check those out. It will change your life. Guaranteed. Um, and also, also, if you have any questions, please put them below and respond when I sign off. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live. I do every day of the week, seven days a week, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Today's a weekend broadcast, hence the casual attire. You can find me live on my personal page, which is Barry Selby. Join me every day. Um, the replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. Please like my page, and you'll see maybe 200 broadcasts there, 300 broadcasts, because Facebook doesn't show them all. But you can definitely like my page, again, barryselby.author. But if you go to my YouTube channel, that's where every single one of them lives safely, harmoniously, and in sequence. So if you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby and you subscribe to my channel, there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where all of these broadcasts live. You can search through by keywords, look at the titles, find ones that speak to you, and get some help. That's my gift to you, my service, and my inspiration. So I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me. Check out the links in the comments. I'll put, in them, in the, I'll put them in there shortly. And uh, learn to love the right way for you. I'll help you do that. But you've got to be willing to reach out. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow for another broadcast, another topical topic maybe. We'll see what happens. Happy February, by the way. This is the first day of February. I know for some people, January was, a, January was a long year. That's the people saying it's a joke. But the reality is we're now in February, which is a whole new paradigm. This is Valentine's month, Ooh. amongst other things. So keep that on your mind. I'll talk to you again tomorrow, something else. Maybe a bit of Valentine's Day, we'll see. But I do appreciate you watching, and I'll, watch, I'll see you again tomorrow. And as always, as a reminder, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.